Uh, yeah. So yeah. So uh, Windows user hex DSL. Ask yes. me anything. I'm here for. I'm here for questions. Well, uh, you know what? Since you're the Windows user hex DSL, what uh, yeah. what what was the reason you actually decided to leave the whole Linux space? Okay, so last time, see, that's the thing. I, I've not left the Linux space as much as like I use my Steam Diverged. Deck pretty much daily, right? And mm -hmm. that's a Linux machine. I've got my my other laptop, which is down there, which I use for like fixing stuff, and it's my my work but my work mm -hmm. tool sort of thing. That's Linux as well. But the main machine I'm on right now, my I, my actual desktop pc is actually under that blanket over there the the, the video list the audio for the audio listeners mm. i'm pointing um a while back i was uh i was doing because as you know last time i've, I've sort of got heavily say heavily i've, I've sort of writing has become my primary pastime right mm -hmm. i like to write novels that are now available at itch.io if anyone's interested but you can get you can find all about my novels if you're interested in hexdsl.com right always shilling um and that's become my primary pastime and as much as the linux community will be wrong in order to do full-time writing there are only two applications that are viable to write a novel and that is mm -hmm. microsoft word or scrivener those are the only two applications where you're going to write a novel in right depending on what sort of person you are depends on which tool you use both what are equally as good in different ways what about latex so <laughs> this is the this is, i'll get back you know what <laughs> I'll get back to this in a minute. I'm going to come. I'm going to circle back around to this. So, if you, if I want to write a novel, right, yes. I'm going to need a, a competent word processor, not Good a text start. editor, word processor. Now, mm. um, if so, I, obviously I was in Linux. So I was like, I tried writing. I wrote most. I wrote one novel in Vim, which was there are problems with that. Let's just say that its spanning and grammar engine are from the 80s. I swear, it's like it's it's, it it's a, and people are going to go. But you can install a plugin to get <clears throat> grammar tool. Mm -hmm. The yeah, no, built-in not... um, does it have a built-in grammar tool? No, it's a built-in dictionary. No, it doesn't. It yeah. doesn't have built-in. But you can add a grammar. You can add grammar tool as in the. But it's not what you call like in 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 Word. I just right click and go click. Yeah. And, and in, in in you know, and when I'm in Vim, I have to be like run this command to run the grammar tool. Mm. It processes go to the you know. There's a lot of it's a lot more mental space to use to correct grammar. It's like almost sure. like you do a chapter, then you go and correct the chapter, right? So it's a lot more work. Anyway, we'll come back to that. Um, so I was like, because I'm in Linux, I, mm. I wrote one in Vim, didn't like it. I thought I actually need an actual the thing people tells me I never. I've said it myself over the years. Unless you're writing a novel, mm. you don't need a word processor. You need a text editor. If you're writing letters. Maybe you need a word, a basic word processor. Mm -hmm. I needed like <clears throat> a, a really competent word processor, so I did what we all do. I installed LibreOffice, OpenOffice, whatever you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. They uh, cut, like they do not work. Um, is the short version. Mm -hmm. uh, they work up to about up to about sixty. That most most word processors are fine up until about sixty thousand words, right? Okay, that's the point at which they just stop. <laughs> not even straight away you write in like i'll open up a word that say i've got a word that's i got a document at seventy thousand words right i'll open it it'll right. be fine i'll be typing and as i'm diving it's just going oh shit oh shit and it just slowly just, just just dies and it just stops working correctly and at first you're like what is happening it's only text but what mm. you gotta remember is the word processor's constantly scanning the entire document looking for spelling errors if i zip back up a para up two paragraphs and change one word and zip back down Anything after that paragraph has got to be reanalyzed, right? Mm. And if I zip back up to the first page to change a character, or if I want to do a find and replace, because I've decided to change a character's name, mm -hmm. it was Lee. Um, I I have to like do that on seventy thousand words, mm. which the truth is, the open source solutions just wasn't very good at. They just did some weird shit, right? And I multiple. And I had the, the, the time I went over the edge was when I saved the document. When I opened it again, it looked different. Not a lot different, yep. but the indents was different. Mm -hmm. And the and I, and when you're writing, you need to like and again, this is probably writers in your audience, right? But like Surely. you need to just open it up, fucking write, right? Yep. Anything yep. between you and writing is wasted creativity, right? Because if I'm in the mood to write, I open my word processor, I hit control N, so I'm at the bottom, I just start typing, right? Mm -hmm. Anything that's not just typing into the hole stifles that creative urge right mm -hmm. and with vim it was the constant mental cycles of like this tool does this i don't agree that you know this this constant back and forth and but i think vim is still the best text editor mm -hmm. but when you get to the point you need a word processor i haven't found a terminal one that does the job genuinely and i've looked right um so i i, I tried a few things 
Open Office didn't work, so I was like, I'll use Google Docs, mm-hmm. right? Google Docs, pretty good. No, Google no? Docs, pretty good, right? Okay. Pretty good, until you get to 20,000 words. Right. Well, my experience just, with Google Docs dead. is, I, my so I used Google Docs years ago. My school was like, so when they first rolled it out, they first rolled it out to like education and stuff. Basically, they sent it out to schools to be beta testers. My school was one of the beta testers. It was fucking horrendous. Because I think they were running it on like, I don't know, a, a server they had si- sitting under like a couple of blankets or something. It was constantly disconnecting. Um, it's a lot better nowadays. Yeah, it's probably running on something like that. That's it over there. Um, yeah. Just on like some server sitting under a desk somewhere. Um, yeah. It was terrible back then. So I'm sort of jaded on Google Docs, but it's you know if it's if it's, it's functional I mean, for the most it's, part, it's, that's it's good. It's usable mm. up until twenty thousand. Right. Yeah. You, you get and then it's janky, but but doesn't die up until about sixty. Then it just mo- mm. most. It seems in my experience, which is not that wide really mm. things start to misbehave at sixty thousand words that's right. the point where things they, they just they just don't cope with it um so then i tried word online um the mm. microsoft office online thing yeah, yeah, right yeah. um word online copes better than any other tool i found right mm-hmm. it's still not right it's still weird and it's mm-hmm. not quite right so i was like i'm just and then then i had this big thing where i switched to scrivener and scrivener is a windows only application it's like the vim of of uh, it's the vim of pros right basically what'd you say it was called scrivener scrivener would you like me to post you a link into chat uh, uh scrivener i know i found it it's all good it's by Literature and Latte is the program. Is the, um... Yes, yes, yes. I found the website. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Scrivener is it's it's a phenomenal piece of software. There's videos about it on my own channel. Mm-hmm. It is a wonderful. It's it's just brilliant, right? Oh, it's um, on Windows, Windows and Mac only. OS. I see, I see. Exactly. Now, you can I did a video. I go at work in Linux through Wine, right? Ah. But it was crashy. <laughs> Um, okay, not yeah. massively crashy, but when I like on a Sunday when I do my writing session, that's six motherfucking hours. I'll be there, right? Yeah. Um, and if it crashes twice, that's two. That's two times I could lose a whole chunk of work. Right now, right. Scrivener's pretty good and does a lot of saving, so I wasn't too worried. I tried it, and it just felt like the wrong tool. It just felt like it, you knew it was running through through a, a compatibility layer. It just didn't feel right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when you've got writing software. Again, writing software responsiveness is as important as it is with a game. Because when I start typing, I need to see the words. Because, like, you're writing. I'm looking at the screen, and I'm sort of half reading what I've just written as yep. I'm thinking of the next line. And I kind of need that responsiveness that's just not there. Um, so I ended up going, uh, this is when I bought the laptop I'm talking to you right now on, right? Mm-hmm. So I ended up going, I'll use Windows on the laptop, and I'll use Linux for everything else, right? Um, but then when the thing I'm doing most with my mm. computer is writing i was just sitting here with my monitors with my laptop open just that didn't make any sense you know right, right. um and slowly over the period of time uh i i've eventually and again scrivener is phenomenal and i have nothing bad to say about scrivener apart from i realized that because i'm a tinkerer by nature that's mm-hmm. what i do i should be tinkering with words not with programs right, right. tooling should should not be there so i tried and because i had it i picked up an office 365 subscription because i mm-hmm. wanted the terabyte of storage you get from OneDrive. because even oh, on yeah. linux it, it's fine it's it's like it's like 60 if you get an offer you can pay 40 quid for a terabyte of storage for the year so it's really cheap so i had ah uh, so i was like i installed word locally on my laptop mm-hmm. and i was like this it never dies ever like you can have hundreds of thousands of words you can have like half a million words and it doesn't give a shit it's resource light. It works on my Android tablet that has a physical keyboard as well. Like because of the way the integration works with OneDrive, it's just I can just like be writing on my laptop, close it, mm-hmm. walk into my bedroom, open up my tablet, and just carry on. And it's just it's just there, right? And it never because it has built-in version control, it never loses anything either. Because it right. just every time it saves, every like minute when it saves, it just does a backup because you've got a fucking terabyte who they don't give a shit. Right? So you end up with like these very, and in Windows, you can just right click on the file and see all the history and just go restore to this point, right? So it's got very good version control. You're not going to get without using Git, and that's got a, lef- a layer of manualness. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I ended up just going, I'm just going to put Windows on my main machine. And it felt weird to say that, but I was like, I, the main thing I want to be doing is writing. The thing I love is Linux as, to, as, a, as, as a thing to do, but I'm trying to get this done. 
And the only and one of the few fields where Linux isn't the dominant leader is writing, right? That's mm. one of the few fields where the software is just not there uh, and the open source stuff's not as good. If I was into maths, if I was a mathematician, that would have been brilliant because Linux is where we live, you know. If, uh, if, I was a, if I was a scientist, it would have been Linux. If I was an aircraft controller, it would have been Linux. 